Let's talk about headstand. Headstand is considered the king of all poses. Uh, it's an interesting pose and it takes some time. Be patient with yourselves. It took me a few months to be able to uh, get over the fear and find the balance and the strength. I already had a lot of core strength, so for me it was mainly balance. But you'll face your own demons and take your time. Um, you need some um, consistency in your practice and some dedication. And if you want to do it, then keep uh, strengthening up and then keep practicing your headstands. We'll look at the classical headstand position where the hands form a cup behind the head and the elbows are on the ground. There's other headstand variations like the tripod headstand, but today we're doing the classical variation. The advantage with the classical variation is that it's easier on the neck. By having the hands behind the head and pressing the elbows down, you force yourself to keep the neck long. And the way that I've been taught it is to also press the crown of the head on the ground so that your neck muscles are active, contracting, and you're not just collapsing on the neck. There's teachers who say that there shouldn't be any weight on the head, but in my uh, understanding, that would be a variation of a forearm stand rather than a headstand. So with the headstand, I would press all the points that are in contact with the ground onto the ground. That's my philosophy with all the poses in yoga, whenever there's a point of contact, you press against it because that's how you find balance. By pressing down, you also find the support of the earth pressing you upwards. I'll go straight to the headstand and then I'll show how you can use the wall to help you strengthen up and to help you find a headstand. Come to all fours and place the elbows on the ground. Grab opposite biceps. The reason we do this is to find the elbows under the shoulders. Then form a cap with your hands, interlace fingers, and if you choose to bring the pinky finger in, that's an easy way so that your pressure is not on the pinky finger. In any case, what you're pressing on the ground is mainly the wrists and, of course, the elbows. So you should be pressing elbows and wrists on the ground the whole time. Don't lose that because then you lose contact with the earth and then you fall. I'll just turn around so that you can see me better. So make sure elbows are under the shoulders, shoulder blades go back, down the back, and then place the crown of the head on the ground. Now to find which part of the head is the crown of the head, just imagine standing up straight and finding the top part. So if the ceiling collapsed, the first part that would touch the head um, is the crown of your head. It's okay to come closer to the forehead, but it's not okay to come closer to the back of the head because then there's too much pressure on the neck. In any case, you're aiming for top of the head on the ground. The back of the head, the bindu point, the top back of the uh, skull is is pressing against this cup that you have formed with your hands. Already, this might feel awkward. So if this is awkward, this can be your headstand for a couple of sessions. Next thing you do is you raise the knees. Already, this might feel awkward. <laughs> if this is too much, then you stay here. Keep pressing elbows down and wrists down. And the next step is to walk the feet closer to the head. You're aiming for the hips to come over the head so that you have this balance. Take your time here. So this is half headstand and you're getting all the benefits of the headstand already. At least that's what we say. <laughs> but in any case, if this is what you've got, then keep pressing elbows down, wrists down, navel in, and keep on curling table up. One day you will magically find that the feet come so close that they start hovering off the ground. So this is the next step where you bring the knees to the chest. This takes a lot of strength. 
So this is already enough. If you're here, then that's perfect. You can stay here forever and this will get you strong, strong, strong. And then this is easier when it comes to balance. So with time, you'll start bringing the legs up, pressing knees together, pressing heels together, pressing legs together, squeezing legs together, pressing, keep pressing the elbows down and the wrists down and then raise the legs. Keep the neck long, so keep pressing the crown of the head on the ground and all the points of contact to the ground. Legs pressing together and then push up through the balls of the feet. Keep the navel in, keep the shoulder blades up, up, up towards your lower back and breathe slowly. To come down one step at a time, first you bring the knees in and then you place the feet down without making any noise. Take your time so you can take a child's pose. And preferably a down dog so that you can shake the head. So nod the head and shake. And also make rounds of the head. Again, take your time before bringing your head up, especially if you're not used to headstands. We've gone through a lot of steps quite fast. This can be your progression over a whole year. That's fine. If you want to use the wall, then I wouldn't suggest using the wall behind you. Of course, you can do it because you can have this um, safety that you won't roll over. But really, uh, it's better if you have empty space in front of you, in case you roll over, you just roll over without any obstacles. It might be that the, the wall is in your way when you're trying to roll over and you end up hurting your neck. So, I mean, that's my personal suggestion. Do not use the wall behind you. I suggest using the wall in front of you. And when I'm saying in front of you, I mean that that's what you're looking at when you're upside down. So, in other words, you will be facing this way. To find the distance uh, from the wall, first sit with the feet on the wall so that you know that you are one leg's distance away from the wall, but your leg. <laughs> so one your leg's distance away from the wall. And then where your butt is, is where your head will go. So see where your hands are, and then that's where that's the distance from the wall you want to keep. Hands will go there and elbows will come, still come under the shoulders. Place the crown of the head on the ground. And you might feel that like you're too close to the wall, but I mean, this is the step that you'll be taking once you already feel comfortable with bringing the feet close to the head. If you're not there yet, then stay with the practices we were doing before with those modifications unless, until you're able to bring the feet close to the head. Then you'll bring the hips up. And again, you might have to stay here for a class or two. And then you'll start walking the feet up the wall. You want the feet to come parallel to the ground. So you form an L shape. This will feel like a lot of work. So you don't want the feet to come further up. This is actually easier. Keep the legs parallel to the ground. Keep the navel in and stay here. Keep pressing elbows down, wrists down, and crown of the head down. Once you feel comfortable here, you can raise one leg. Take a couple of breaths, and then you can switch the leg. Keep both legs straight, pressing away through the heel of the foot, pressing the wall, and pressing up the ball of the foot of the vertical leg and then with time you'll start playing with it so that you come to upside down
you carefully be bringing the feet down the wall. Because remember, the most important thing is to be mindful while you're getting into poses and out of poses. Headstands take a lot of practice, so happy practice and keep enjoying every step of the way because really it's the steps that count. Once you're there, then okay, you just, you've got it. So just get there safely and always mindfully and you'll be so strong, I can't even 